Welcome to the Cult of Comics podcast. I am your host, Tyler Brown, and I'm ju- yeah, joined by my usual friends and cohorts and fucking assholes, Sean Walsh and Josh Craven. What's going colleagues, on, guys? Colleagues, colleagues, not friends, colleagues. I don't know. What's, acquaintances, yeah. mutual acquaintances. Don't, don't overstep your here. bounds. I only contact <laughs> them only on here. We do not have any other chemistry outside of this. I definitely don't. Not yet. Uh, Purely professional. The night and sniff his underwear. Um... Welcome to the Cult of Comics podcast. If you've never been on the show before, we are a Cult of Comics media podcast, meaning that we talk about everything comics related. That includes comic books themselves, movies, graphic novels, uh, radio shows, Netflix uh, adaptations, um, fantasy, uh, fan fictions, cosplays, um, cards that are being made, that are being found on Reddit um reddit sub threads and then we just this is that's mostly what we do is just, we just read off reddit sub threads yeah we right just here. bitch and moan you know those like reaction videos of like guys on tiktok <laughs> who are like reading a tweet like as if it's the first time reading it and they're like, oh, wow, wow. that's us that's all we do oh, on the show so God. welcome if you uh haven't turned it off already if you haven't stopped listening or watching thank you for staying on because that was all a lie haha the cake was a lie and it is currently Sunday, March 14th, uh, 2021. The pandemic is still surging. And every day I live closer uh, uh, in fear of death and in stronger relationship with the Lord and Savior God. Um, and we should get started with this and just start off by saying pray feed. Who are we praising this time? To the one and only Lord and Savior, Jeff Johns. All hail Jeff Johns. All hail Jeff Johns. Um, how you guys doing? I'm I'm doing. You're doing. Time is a construct. Yeah. Time is a construct, and we as can we have modify seen, it whenever we want. It is. We've time traveled. It is daylight savings time only over here in the U.S., not over there in the U.K. If you didn't know that, the U.K. does not have that's that's why Sean. No, they asleep. do have it. He's two have weeks it. off. It's in no, two no, no. weeks. It's okay. Is it two weeks off? Yeah. Yeah. They change uh, every couple of decades, they tweak it. So like back in, uh, I think it was about 2006, 2007, we were kind of on the same track, but we expanded it by, you know, two weeks in either direction. Why do you Because America has to be bigger and better. Because I'm curious about things. He I'm enjoys biking. learning. I'm, and I'm horny. I'm information curious. <laughs> Isn't there a sexuality where you're attracted to somebody's curiosities or uh, intelligence? Yeah, something like that. What's that called? Is that like parasexual? You know, no, get fuck off and get out of here. And you come back to me when you read the dictionary. Anyways. Tyler, um, you say that you reminds me. Can you explain to me what demisexual is quickly? Is that like all? I don't know. I matched with a girl no. on Tinder earlier who said in her profile, straight right. demisexual. Uh, that I think that that's the thing. I think that's the thing where you're attracted to intelligence. Because pansexual and bisexual is what I am. I, I parasexual is for fungus and single-celled organisms. So probably not. Uh, parasexual? Parasexual. I didn't say the parasexual. I said pansexual. I guessed parasexual, but that was that was not right. All right, WebMD. Uh, okay. What does demisexual mean? What does demisexual You're attracted mean? attracted to demigods. Like, yes. Uh, that's what I kind of uh, when you have an emo- attracted to someone, they have an emotional bond with. Oh, so you can only have sexual attraction to somebody when you're in love. You have an emotional bond. Yeah, I've heard about that. It's kind of like being asexual, also known as gray ace or gray sexual. Okay, that was a weird tangent to start the episode off with. Well, so I mean, news. we should. Yeah, we should have. You know what? We're already <laughs> here. Why don't we have a conversation about your? Tw- uh, your uh, Tinder uh, findings, your Twitter Twitter hustles, your your slinging it around, your slutty slander. Yeah, what's your uh, what's your opening line? Where's my opening? <laughs> Where's my bio? Let's have a little look. No, no, let's like what's the first look. thing you message? What's your uh, oh, move? It varies profile to profile. You have to have a what move, is a universal move. Uh, my opening line varies profile to profile. I customize it for the target. Oh, very nice. Mm. It annoys me when they have like one picture and no bio. Oh, I hate that shit. It's like, but you're still swiping on them. I swipe on everyone. I yeah. don't. God, you are a skank. I at least have some standards. At this point, I'm just really bored and go on it for five minutes a day 
and just yeah. I don't swear on everyone, but like she was attractive. I only need to see one picture. You know, I and, have and I'm like, had, wait, how do I approach this? I've had so many bad or random or weird experiences with Tinder that I just am not. I'm happy I'm not on that anymore. We we've all heard your TikTok story. Not just the kidnapping part. And I'm, I'm talking about like somebody that I had matched with that we never met up uh, or anything. I later found out that she just wanted like a kinky daddy. Um, she started just like appearing randomly on social media. And I was really thrown off by it. Like I found uh, somebody had drawn a really beautiful watercolor portrait of her on Reddit. And then uh, the next thing I know, she was on Tumblr. And I'm like, why is she keep fucking showing up? This is weird to me, especially because she unmatched me. So it was really awkward. And then she added me on Snapchat. The, uh, like, What's happening? That's the uh, Bader Meinhof effect. I th- mm, I'm fairly certain it's certain it's the Freddy Krueger effect. <laughs> You're not <Okay>. wrong. <laughs> She's in your dreams. Okay. Um, should we uh, get started talking about some of the news that's going on with the world today? Yeah. Let's do it. Cool. Newsy poozy. Newsy newsy poozy. <laughs> <laughs> Newsy poozy. Well, Welcome unfortunately, the, the news episode. wasn't put in the news, so I have to go to the script section, unfortunately, because unfortunately, some people are slipping in their jobs on this uh, podcast. If the script but goes in the script. That's okay. Shh. Go back to sleep. Um, okay. In top news, we're going to talk about Avengers Endgame gross has been beaten by the Avatar re release in China. Uh, what did they make domestically? They made 600 million? 600 billion. Trillion? Billion? Trillion? Come on, Josh. You're the one who brought this up. All right. Avengers disassembled, made... Yeah, just Google it on the show. This is a great, this is a great show. <laughs> yeah. um, it made seven... Wait, no, I fucked up. Domestically, yeah, 749 million. Jesus Christ. So what did they what? make internationally? Avengers Endgame? Oh, I was on Avatar. All right, cool, because I'm on Avengers Endgame. Domestically cool. made See, 858 that's, that's synergy million. there. That's teamwork. United okay. States and Canada working together. USA. <laughs> so, wait, what does that mean? Does that mean that... It means Avatar made a lot more money overseas in other oh, territories. Like Avatar made a fuckload in China. Yeah. yeah, but doesn't... Don't most of the movies that get re-released in China end up, like, blowing the fuck up because it's China and they have... Yeah, yeah. So... Well, all, all of these old movies, older movies, are being re-released because no new movies are coming out in theaters. So the theaters right. are just rerunning old stuff. Like, I had the opportunity to go watch Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Okay. And did you take that opportunity? No, nah, we did this show instead. Oh, oh fun. The oh, best show, yeah. Mm-hmm. Making your life just a little bit little bit harder every day. Welcome next you, time. You can t- Josh is going to be like extra salty this episode because his family are off having fun at Spider Man and he's here with us. <laughs> yeah. And nah, that was I'm gonna a couple weeks ago. Up, I'm going to take this opportunity to plug our Patreon because thank you very much, Josh, for reminding me that we're making your life one day, one day at a time just harder every single way, which way we can. So we can make it even worse by you giving us a dollar. Go on to patreon.com, look up Culty Comics, and give us a dollar. Why? Because we want it. We want your money. Uh, we want to hear absolutely none of your opinions. We're going to, in fact, Give us your opinions just so we can belittle you. For the $5 or higher level, we will spit uh, in an envelope, send it to you personalized, and tell you that your mother is ashamed of you. And if your mother's dead, we'll say that we had sex with your mother's corpse. Something like that. Help me out here. I can't and judge that. you for not wearing matching socks. There you go. Yeah. And then for the $10 and higher level, we're going to be like, why are you giving us $10 a month? That's a lot of money that you could be using for, I don't know, Disney Plus or something. A burrito? There. A burrito, but we're better than Disney Plus because we at least are stand. We have we come out weekly. We give everything that we have all of the content you could want. Are you uh, are you a little salty that there wasn't an episode this Friday? A little bit, yeah. Actually, I was because I was One Division is just not a good show to me at this point. I'm really disappointed. It's dead to you. It is. No, you know what? It's it died, was resurrected as a white version of itself. Then it discovered, rediscovered itself, and then it flew off. And then I said, oh, well, that's gone. Yes, there's no more point to that plot. Oh, well. Uh, um, anyway, we are we done talk- with our shameless shell, or are you still going? Oh, I'm done. I'm going to move on to the uh, boys' like spinoff. So we're just, okay, we're not. We're done with Avengers and Avatar? I thought that was already Yeah, those, they're going to just swap back and forth over yeah. time. 
They're yeah, so close that's to that's each other. Like the difference was Avatar needed to make like seven million dollars and that was it. Yeah, and there, there, it's already had several re-releases. There is well. something else you need to consider too. I don't know how much Avengers um, has been okayed by the Chinese government uh, over the last couple of years. They, they have a lot. Of they still made uh, you know two billion dollars, you know, in other territories besides the U.S. So there's plenty of other markets to tap. Yeah, exactly. Um, yep. It made. The, the Black Widow movie was not going to be released in... in China because it has a skull on one of the characters. That's that's enough. It made six hundred and thirty million dollars in China. End game. China's censorship program is very strange. It just has very strange like limitations, like no occult stuff, no skulls. I don't know why. It just has that. Yeah. Avatar doesn't have any of those. All they have is blue people going around and fornicating by having their tails touch. What's this horse? Been? And now I'm one with this horse. Um, the boy spinoff. Tell me about that. Who knows about that? Not me. Oh, sorry. Was that me? Did I post yeah, that? That was you. That was you. The boy spinoff near series order at Amazon. It nears it's, a series uh, order. Yeah. So this is going to be about a group of teens at a school. So this is going to be like the young, the young ones. What What were those guys? I already called? hate Avengers? it. The teen, the teen squad, the, or whatever, the, the young Avengers. Yeah, no, I meant like in the boys. They had all those youth superhero groups. They did. Yeah, that's that's what A Train was part of, and his girl, you know, his ex girlfriend. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I thought that was like a passing thing. I don't remember that in the slightest. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, they mention it, yeah, uh, in the first season a couple of times. Okay. So this is this is going to be like. Some people have said maybe it'll be like a mockumentary, you know, following kids around the, you know, I don't know if it's going to be like a Xavier school for gifted folks or what. I hope there's a guy uh, in the wheelchair. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's all news to me. Who is in charge of this? Do we know? Is it still uh, Craig? Uh, yeah, I'm not interested. Craig Rosenberg will be the showrunner and executive producer. What has he done? He's uh he's a writer and executive producer on The Boys. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm curious now. Okay. I'll give it a chance. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to uh, anyways, boys. I'm just enjoying yeah, the fuck exactly. out of show. Yeah, they they announced. You know, I don't know. They're saying uh, it's nearing a series order, but they're talking about you know people that have joined the cast. So, well, I guess it's a they're sure trying thing. to put together a pilot. I guess I don't know. Yeah, nearing a series order. This potential idea might come into reality, and apparently that's news. Why am I snap so weak? Yeah, I think the bigger announcement, they announced the project uh, back in September, but this was just a casting announcement. In, uh, in other news, I wrote down a picture of uh, a cat that could potentially 10 years from now be a movie. Cats too? You, you, you wrote down a picture. Yeah, I wrote down a picture. Yeah. Butthole and all? Butthole and all. Yeah, little Release cat the butthole cut. Release the butthole cut. <laughs> Ah oh, man, if I never hear any more Justice League news, I'm gonna be very happy. Um. Oh hey, you know what's coming out this week? Is there is there oh, a, is there a butthole cut of Justice League coming? There may as well be. No, you know what? There's gonna be a Ray Fisher penis cut. Oof. Wait. There you go. I made the joke. Inappropriate. Um, there there are um, too many yeah. jokes to make about that, man. I know. It's just inappropriate. Hopes and appropes. Touch the scrotes. Um, I'm hearing that there's going to be a new Greg Capullo creator-owned comic book coming out, and it's going to be another yeah. Scott Snyder. Yes. Yeah. Super we, secret. secret. We don't secret. have a title. Yes. Things. Yes. Is this not going to be the Spawn stuff that they were already doing? It's uh, they they have an imprint with Image, the one that knocked Terra's on, Best yeah. Jacket Press. This is another comic that they're releasing through that, so it's independent. Okay, so it's not going to... Well, I mean, Spawn it, it technically is considered independent, right? Yeah, yeah but that, that's through McFarlane's this, this, so company. Not we, we already have some art that's been We've released. we got a lot of art. Yeah. It's uh, just pencilings right now. Uh, it yeah. seems to center Capullo's around been... this uh, father-daughter relationship. Maybe a whole family. 
Why would you link me a bleeding cool article? You know because it's got all the it's got all the art compiled on there. You should have just linked to his Instagram. I could have done. You may as well have. I assume you've already seen his Instagram though. I have, but I've yeah. mostly been just like, okay, he's drawn stuff. So, cool. She's got a robotic arm. It's set in mm. 2016. The year before she, everything fell apart. She kills people. Yep. And that's okay. all we've got for now, pretty much. Yep. Probably find out more in the next month. I mean, yeah. I can the already fact tell has been, that there is existence a, has been uh, acknowledged now, so a proper announcement must be coming soon. A couple things to notice here. Um, there's a relationship with her father in this storyline where she was taught how to fire a gun because of him. Looks like there's a uh, preacher yelling about hellfire and brimstone. Shit, we've already talked. Of, we need to talk about Rorschach. Yeah. Sorry. We'll get to it. And I then, know. Uh, it just sounds like some of the plot lines from Rorschach, you know? Yeah, I see that. There's literally one where her robotic arm has the word God on it. I don't, it's interesting. God something, God's gift. God gives? You know, God, God backwards is dog. Thank you, Josh. Your input is very valid, and I really appreciate you on this show. Maybe Thank just you. sit quietly for the time being. Go watch <laughs> Trolls. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, I'm de- I'm obviously gonna check it out. Greg Capullo yeah. is my thing, but I'm just so fucking Knock tired of working with uh, Scott yeah. Snyder. But it's creator right now. It's not Batman, bigger than life, I'm multiversal. I'm, just, I'm I'm tired. I'm tired of those two working together at this point. They've been working together for the last ten plus years, and it's just like, dude, you can and work with other people. I wonder if I'm gonna book. have that attitude to like Josh Williamson and and uh some other you know team ups was that a sentence <laughs> yeah yeah it was did i not did i not come I think, through i think your audio here? glitched on like the first did, couple of words did, so it just sounded oh. really, really oh strange. okay well, I, I said i wonder the, uh, when i'm gonna feel the same way about uh joshua williamson and andre bresson you know they they're gonna work together for some time yeah, but that's different because they haven't been working together for 10 plus fucking years. Yeah, and I said, I wonder, you know, when I'm going to end up where I feel that way. Eh. Move your mic closer. Okay. Yep. Yep. Is, this, is this good? Maybe I just... Better. I'll just leave the mic right here. That's completely fine. Yeah. That way I can't see your soft pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, is this... Is this okay? I just this episode this episode is just turning out exactly how I wanted this to go. This is like we're we're all just gonna edit this all out. We'll just put a little smiley right here. Should I just like start putting in like just random like like fuck yous and flipping the birds? Mm-hmm. Product placement. Just have Disney come in and try to sue us with a t-shirt. Um. Anyways, yep. I don't. I just. I'm tired of seeing Greg Capullo work with Scott Snyder at this point. I love Greg Capullo's art. I'm just. I'm yeah, very. But I'm excited because it's creator-owned. If it was a DC project he was teasing, I'd be like, really? But creator-owned, there's room in there for it to be magical. One last ride. I swear every single thing we've done of like the last five years has been their one last ride. So we're doing Metal. It's our big send-off to the DCU. Oh, yeah. it's We're also doing this is Last like, Night on you know, Earth, which is After you guys big graduate farewell. from college, you go on your big trip to wherever for your one last time. Speaking of Snyder and Capullo, I picked up their Batman number one this week. I'm sorry. How pretty it is. Is that news? That is news. I saw a moment. It's of news now. Time. Yeah. Welcome to the Cult of Comics. We've got we've got no order to anything anymore. <laughs> it was You're relevant. Order. Look, all um, I'm saying is this. I think that if you're going to be in this industry you have to be willing to step outside of your comfort zone and work with people that you're not going to be. He's been in the industry for 30 plus years. I want to see him do something with somebody like James Tinian. I want to see him do something with, fuck, I don't know. I I would even see something with him with Bendis. I don't see them working well together, but I would still read it. 
Um, I would love to see him work with Stephanie Phillips. This, I just want to see something that's going to be different because I feel like maybe I do because agree, but with creator owned work, I don't know what to expect. So I'm just hopeful it's going to be something fresh and feel fresh. I, I, I get that logic, but at the same time, I'm also sitting here like, okay, let me give you an example. The last time I saw Greg Capullo do something that wasn't with Scott Snyder was with Mark Miller. And that was for, uh, reborn. Yeah. Which was not that good. Art was great. Storyline was kind of yep. mediocre. Yep. Very standard Mark Miller. Yeah. It was just a script and it was like a solid, like neutral, like throughout the whole thing. And I'm just like, yep, that was a story. Can't say yep. that I was like left life changed about it, but I definitely read it. And I was like, that's the end. I think all that right. was probably the last Mark Miller story that I bought. It's just like, these are all starting to blend together. You know, I mean, I read um, Space Bandits and I read uh, Sharky the Bounty Hunter and I preferred Space Bandits, but I didn't it, get Magic Order. I didn't get Prodigy. None of it. I'm, I'm not going to buy I... any more Mark Miller or anything. I read Huck and i was very disappointed oh, like no. the first issue i really enjoyed and then it went yeah. on a, it went on a really weird direction after that i don't yeah, know it was pretty weird from... uh i did get the uh follow-up to american jesus a couple of years ago why just to see how it goes it wasn't All bad right. i don't know man i feel like i've i've given i feel like that's the way of i feel like that's like the typical way to describe mark miller books it's not bad but that's the problem, used right? To be good. Like, yeah. How many times can you just be like, okay, well, it's just good enough to be a passing grade, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Moving yeah. on from that, we should talk about uh, a writer that we're actually really fond of. James Tiny the Fourth is coming out with a new creator-owned comic uh, from Black Label called The Nice House on the Lake with art by Alvaro Martine Martinez Fernandez. Alvaro Martinez Fernandez. Who will not only draw Ooh. you beautiful pictures, Oh, but sorry, I got also... the name. I got Hang the name on, wrong. I'm not done. He, what? Alvaro Martinez Bueno, not Fernandez. Bueno. You bastard. The nice house on the lake. This nice. cover looks really nice. Is that the one with the girls and the bones? Or that yeah. uh, the river? Or the like uh, lake with the house? The one with the girl in the bones, and you can see the house on the oh, hill okay. behind. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> I was looking at the uh at Google and they split the top half and the bottom half apart from each other. So I thought it was two different color oh, okay. covers. Assholes. But yeah, the art, artwork that's been released for it now looks really good. Like, I'm a fan of um, Martinez. Yeah. And he's doing a slightly different style here. Like I mean, you know he's good. He's yeah, exactly. Was that, but, that was in the back of something this week. Was that in the back of uh, Wonder Woman? No, I don't think he was on anything this week. And I um, saw that I, I I saw something I read this week was had it in the back. Oh, it was in the back of Carmen. That's what it was. No, that's not right. Was it? No. What the hell was it? Gosh, in the back I just of? want you to know your participation on this podcast means everything to me. You know what? <laughs> you know what? I don't care, man. It's whatever. Um, looking at the artwork on this, are you noticing the uh, symbols? One is highlighted and then it says book one. So there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten books, presumably. Jesus, maybe it was last week. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, saw this. I saw this in the back of something. Yeah, it could be, it's a 12 issue series. Oh, it's 12 issues. Okay, cool. Yeah. Interesting that they have the ten symbols. I wonder if that's going to be uh, if it's not going to be tied to the chapters. And what the, what is going to be about? Yeah, I mean, obviously hmm. going to buy it. It's going to be James Tunney in the fourth. He's he's become one of my yeah. He's a <laughs> cult of comics darling. He absolutely he a cult of comics uh, cutie. <laughs> he's our golden child. Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, his creator and stuff has been really good. So I've been reading some things, Glimmer Children, Wind, and Department of Truth that we've all been reading as well. You know, He's, I never got the chance to actually check out Wind, but you guys... It's do, really, like, really solid. It's I mean, I want to check it out. Yeah, it's only five issues. It's getting a sequel series at some point. I'll check it out. I'll, I'll pick up the trade or something where, wherever I can. Because, I mean, I'm very curious. I'm by curious. Um, yeah, he's been a writer I've been following for years now, and his writing is really... You can see how it's progressed, and he's really come into his own as a writer. Sure. I feel like he's definitely grown a lot more over time. I feel like when I had read a lot of his stuff prior, like I loved Batman and Robin Eternal. That was fantastic. Um, 
I liked bits of it, but just on the whole, like they wreck on Tim's story, they wreck on Cass. It's just a little weird. And then he, like a year later, he retcons it again in Detective that Comics. Was, that is because editorial. The, well, it's not just editorial. It's also editorial was like, well, we're, we have to retcon this because we're in the new Fifty Two. Yeah. You now, while we're in the new Fifty Two, we have to like make all these changes, and we have to explain away why Cassandra is not orphan and why or why she becomes orphan instead of Batgirl why Stephanie Brown doesn't become Batgirl and now she's I uh, I know orphan. but it's still you know he also know. ruined Mr. Freeze what do you mean he ruined Mr. Freeze because they did that whole story where it turned out Nora wasn't actually his wife oh right when was that that was during the Court of Owl stuff annual number one Wow, that was a, that's a that's a big callback. I forgot about that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. So I I remember when I read that, I was like, "This tiny guy, what a hack!" And then he did Detective Comics, and I was like, "Okay, I might be wrong." Yeah, I've heard from uh, people that he's one of those guys that is a really good superhero writer, but I actually disagree. I think he's a really good superhero like comic book writer, but I prefer his creator on stuff at this point. Definitely, I feel like yeah, that dramatically more. He's just um, a really good writer on the whole yeah absolutely no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this and this art actually looks really this cover though looks really familiar is this not jesus says that looks like like that artist um am i wrong it doesn't say who did the cover i can't tell the uh, colors are going to be jordy belair so i mean we know for a fact it's going to be vibrant and colorful and beautiful yeah the cover doesn't look like martinez's work no, not at all. That's why I'm saying it must be his who says. Maybe it's just the promotional stuff, but I mean, I'm, I'm curious. Um, I haven't seen him do a whole lot of stuff lately. Oh, well. Um, moving on. Uh, it looks like the Brian Michael Bendis Checkmate book has finally been solicited. It took four years. Uh, did you just boo you cut out there for a second? Boo. Who? 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 Winnie who? the Pooh. Poo poo. Belusky do. Weekend too. Is this the next event, Leviathan? Yeah, it's the sequel. It was supposed to be from a couple of years back, but it got pushed back because of everything going on with 5G. And then yeah, Sean and I they, have been having. They didn't want it to get interrupted by 5G, which is a weird thing to say because it's a six issue mini series. Absolutely. That will, will have been finished long before 5G actually happened. See, the thing is, Sean thinks that everything is Bendis' fault. And in be. my opinion, this strikes me as more of like an editorial issue. Because this, they said that they he has Green Arrow in the book, and apparently they need to pull back a whole bunch of random stuff because Green Arrow yeah. happens to... They this. brought on two new writers, Jackson Ke uh, Lansing and Kelly. I don't know their first names. But they were hired. They were told they were going to have a decent run as long as it sells well. So they plotted out a... 30 or maybe 40 issue story they pitched it to didio and editorial and were told this is great like full steam ahead guys you like this can be great they wrote the first two issues of their run and then after they finished writing issue two and submitted it for art and everything and started working on uh, issue three they were told issue three was their last issue and the book was ended wow because he uh, green arrow is being used in checkmate but that doesn't make any sense because it's not like I can read a freaking book and then say, okay, well, this is happening over here. This is happening over here. I have some they nuance. Did. I'm not a fucking idiot. They like, did that for to. Superman for, you know, so many years when you have what one Superman book every single week, Batman book every single week. It's not the same storyline across every yeah. single thing. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, as, not as that well, it's not like, like he jumps I'm, back and forth like, you know, he and comes like, back to this story a month later, you know, after, you know, I'm going to spend a week uh, working on this project. Uh, next week, I'll work on this project. And I'll come back and deal with that guy in like three or four weeks, man. And like, I know it's not Bendis's fault personally, but it's like Super Sons got cancelled because he took over Superman and wanted to age up John. Green Arrow got cancelled because he wanted Green Arrow and Checkmate. And like, I know it's not personally him going cancel his books. I want these characters. Or I hope not, at least. No, it's not. Because the yeah. same thing happened with Jeff Johns. Look at literally everything that happened with Shazam, uh, Plastic Man, Booster Gold. I mean, how many of these characters have just been underutilized just because Jeff Johns has had some semblance of yeah. an idea? And no, I know. He, he had a Booster Gold run. 
he has done a booster gold run and Gail Simone did a plastic man run four years uh, ago maybe uh, run it was it was a six issue like six issues yeah yeah but for 10 years he held on to that character like yeah. i told you the story about mitch clem you know wanted to do a story about that and getting hired at dc temporarily but then they were like no the the issue is at dc for some reason they for they are they're making weird decisions when it comes to pacing out what stories are going to be done by who like i get it you want your best writers on staff to do a story i get that but at the same time if you don't let new creators come in and then make the the effort make give them the chance to grow i mean what the fuck is the point and plus if batman can have five fucking books coming out all at once if they can put out five batman books in a single month, I can fucking comprehend a Green Arrow story that has him in another yeah. partial and role in a story. It, it really hurts because Green Arrow is one of my favorite characters in the DCU. You know and like, um, their first two issues were really, really good. Like, it set up a lot. It looked like it was going to be a good direction. And then, yeah, issue three just sort of had to end this book. I mean, at this point, and I can't. Like, I can only speculate about like the reason for why some of like the higher ups are making some of the decisions they do, right? Like you can speculate about like why Swamp Thing was canceled. Some people were saying it was because there was an issue with Warner Brothers. Some people say it yeah. was an issue with communication between the production companies, but or that it was an issue between HBO Max and DC Universe. But like you really just don't know. Yeah, but it's like their third issue came out March sixth, twenty nineteen, and we've had no Green Arrow since then. There's and been no like, Green Arrow. No, outside of like his few appearances in other books. What the fuck is the point? Wait, so yeah. nothing was going on during Death Metal? No Green Arrow books? I don't even think he showed up in the event. That makes no sense. That's idiotic. Yeah. yeah. So we, we could have had, they had it's him... now been over two years since this book ended. We could have had two years of that. Yeah. Green Arrow. Well, they story. had him in Infinite Frontier Zero for like one page. Yeah. Well, it was a couple um, pages. Yeah. But yeah, it just sucks that they took him off board and like cancelled. Like, I know it, I do know it's not Bendis' fault, but like, I'm still angry that he's oh. given this much power. But how much power can he really have if at this point now he's just doing one book and then he's stepping away and being like, I'm going to do this show for a minute? I mean, yeah, if anything, still, I feel like it's less than no, he has. No other power. writer could take over a book and they're like, okay, we're cancelling this other book for you. I feel like it's more of an issue of people in in power in the positions of authority that are saying like, okay, well, yeah, we'll I, do this but books. no, they wouldn't do that for any other writer. They wouldn't be like they would do that for Jeff Johns, and they definitely yeah. have done that for Outsider. Yeah, but they canceled the fucking Justice pick. book because they wanted. If, him if, to say they put say they put Mariko Tamaki on Superman in 2018 when Bendis took over, they wouldn't mm-hmm. be like, oh, we're canceling Super Sons because she wants to do something with John. I mean, she's they, an Eisner award winning writer, so I mean, it depends. They, she's not Bendis. You never know with these decision makings. I mean, I don't really get it. I'm not trying to defend it at this point. I'm just saying that I don't understand the, the, the decision, decision making for the people in these positions of yeah. power. Don't get no, it. I know. Anyway, yeah, checkmate. Six issues delayed two years. Took way too goddamn long. And at this point, I don't even remember what happened. All I remember is, is what happened at the action comics stuff, and that was kind of weird. Yeah. Like I'm still gonna pick it up because I love Alex Maliev. I think that's the really big reason is because yeah, Alex the Maliev art's the big reason to pick it up because is... Event Leviathan wasn't good. Are we gonna disagree now? It wasn't what I was hoping it was going to be. I wouldn't say it was bad. There wasn't a story there. It was ca- each issue was them going around to a different character. There wasn't a story. They went around to different characters. They were unrelated to the plot. Like they randomly showed up to Jason Todd. They were like, "Have you read a mystery ever?" There, there was no mystery. Tell Have me you read a mystery, mystery ever? Yes, I've read mystery books. They literally go around to different people trying to figure out what it is. That's literally the definition of a mystery. A mystery would be search for clues. Yeah. They wouldn't just go around pointing at characters saying you're Leviathan, and it's like, no, I'm not. Let's fight for an issue. Oh, Lois Lane just stole the Batmobile. 
she's Leviathan. There was one point where they had a challenge and they fought and the characters literally got into a fist fight with each other. And that was Redhead Jason Todd. Everybody else was like, well, let's think about this and sit in this for a moment. Then Steve Trevor got kidnapped. There was a mystery that was going on here. You can't say that there wasn't a mystery when there was a mystery. There wasn't a mystery. That's like if I was reading the question comic and then saying like there was no Western part of it. A mystery requires clues and something to follow. Going around pointing at different characters saying, Lois Lane's Leviathan, Talia Argul is Leviathan, Jason Todd is Leviathan, isn't a mystery. It's them throwing accusations until one sticks. And then the bad guy reveals himself at the end, off panel anyway, to Superman. A character who wasn't involved. It was on panel. He opens the thing up, his faceplate opens. That's a weird thing to argue about. At the end of issue five, he reveals himself to Superman, but we don't see it until the beginning of issue six. That's a normal thing to do in comics. A normal thing would have been to have the final page of page five, uh, issue five be his reveal instead of saving it for the first page of issue six. Okay, if you want to argue semantics yeah. about techniques, yeah, that that's they have that's done me. Be, that's me being nitpicky, but like, there was not a mystery you could follow. There was a mystery. They literally spent five issues going, "Who is it? Look at the clues. Better go talk to some people. Let's talk to each other." They didn't look that's at any. The mystery. Josh, Josh is Josh is bored. Let's move on. What's the next story? <laughs> oh, more more Green Arrow. Green Arrow is getting an 80th anniversary issue with a list of creators. He can't do that if he's doing uh, if he's doing checkmate. He can't do that. I don't know how they did it. Those crazy sons of bitches managed to pull it off. Is that 10 more on cover art, by the way? I love it. Yes. Fantastic. And it's doing the decades variant that some of the other big landmark issues have had. So we've got 19... One thing I really did not like about... uh, event leviathan that just really just felt like it didn't need a point at this point was when they introduced lois lane fuck you lewis lane's like backup team of like detectives yeah i was literally thinking about that of like bullock deathstroke they had they had no no point to that why why are these characters together and what are they actually contributing to the story this that comes across to me as look at how much editorial was like no let's bring it down and I'm just going to interfere with all of your ideas. That's what that came across to me as. Anyway, Green Arrow variant covers. We've got a 1940s variant by Michael Cho, who I think has done all the 1940s variants so far. The Wonder Woman 750, Flash 750, Mm. Detective and Action 1000. Um, 1950s variant by Daniel Warren Johnson, who did the Wonder Woman Dead Earth book. Is that correct? Correct. He's also doing the uh, upcoming Beta Ray Beta Ray Bill book, and then yep. he's done a book called Murder Falcon, which was fun. A lot of his yep. stuff is just fun. And um, we got perfect choice for this era. We got 1960s variant by Neil Adams. Who else could perfect. you pick for that era? No one better. Um, 1970s variant by Derek Chu, who is not a name I recognize. Derek Chu. Chu, yes. C H U. C H E W. Oh, interesting. I, hmm, I don't know that person at all. Um, the next one is one I'm going to be picking up most likely, which is a 1980s variant by Gary Frank. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 1990s mm. by Howard Porter. Okay. 2000s by Jen Bartel, who did the Art and Immortal Wonder Woman. So that's going to be a gorgeous cover. And then 2010 variant by Simone Di Mio who I believe is the artist who did uh, We Only Find Them When They're Dead and Harley Quinn, Future State. Okay, cool. And I'll just list off some of the creators doing the actual book. We've got Mike Grell, Jeff Lemire, Phil Hester, Otto Schmidt, Ben Percy, Tom Taylor, Stephanie Phillips, Mariko Tamaki, Ram B, Vita Ayala, Nicholas Scott, and Brandon Thomas. Did you say Mike Grell? Yes. Fuck yes. That's awesome. I'm pumped for that. It is kind of weird to me that they're doing these anniversary issues outside of the mainstay stuff. Like it's I get because it. it gets a good sales boost. Well, I don't think it's just that. I think it's also that they fucked up their the numbering so bad that they can't like yeah. do a regular celebration issue, right? Do you remember when Batman came out with this 800th issue and there was no celebration whatsoever except for a single Tony S. Daniel variant cover? And he's gone gonna go get it i had it on hand why do you have it on hand <laughs> why did you just have that 
I'm just super prepared for this issue, for this episode. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. I don't it, it was gorgeous. It, but that was before they started doing like the detect like the big landmark issues. Yeah. I don't know. I've well, also got Wonder I- Woman and Flash 700 if you want to mention those make them relevant so I can pull them out did as well. Just, did you just buy them? Is that like what's going on here? No, they were just like on the top of my stack that I'm sorting yeah, out. Yeah, you were sell. showing those off like two yeah. weeks ago? Yeah. Don't They've just all been dumped happen, on man. the top of the pile since then. Dude, I, I mean, I feel honestly, my collection is like, I've really got to uh, touch up some stuff. Um, That reminds me, I need to send you some comics. Uh, Do it for free. Um, for free? We've also got for free, yes. Um, we've got Wonder Woman Black and Gold, which is a book in the similar to Bane's Batman Black and White and Superman sure. Red and Blue. Red and Blue, yeah. Uh, so this is oh, to man. celebrate her Limited color palettes are so hot right now. Yeah. <laughs> I just um, love clean minimalism. I just, it's so pretty. Yeah, yeah so this I don't mind it. book has stories by John Arcudi, Becky Cloonan, okay. um, Amy Reader, AJ Mendez, and Nadia Shamas. They're the writers of issue one. I know Becky Cloonan, and that's it. I know Becky Cloonan, and that's like all of them. That's weird. Yeah. I don't know anybody else in that entire list. Yeah. Uh, John RQD's name stands out to me. He might be the one who did Two Moons uh, Image a couple of weeks ago. Am I ago. just a really bad comic book collector? Am I just a slut? Am, is that the issue here? Do I just, am I just, I'm a part of the problem. You are. Maybe. Um, the first step. Oh, Whoa. That's a just <laughs> <laughs> this episode, man, is just going fucking perfect. Uh, Everything yeah, he, about it. He did. I just like that didn't happen. Uh, he did two moons number one at Image like two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh man, I just I, I don't even care anymore at this point. I'm just saying fuck it. This episode is a, is a wash, <laughs> but I don't even mind. Let's, I'm just having fun with it at this point. Like, what else can you do? Fuck it. I love this. This is so funny. <laughs> I'm really excited about Hello, it. Hello, viewer. Are you still with us? Are you still there? Why are you still watching? I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, and last thing, we have Batman Reptile, which is a Black Label series announced by Garth Ennis and Liam Sharp. Is it Reptile or Reptilian? It could be Reptilian. I don't know. Liam Sharp, man, I thought... I just read the issue 12 of uh, Grant Morrison's Green Lantern run, and that art style was a lot but the art that i'm seeing on this is dramatically different this looks like traditional liam sharp yeah the cover is not by him if that's what you're looking at well no i was talking about uh some of the more like really dramatic looking um like super muscular stuff liam sharp oh you know what batman gets uh bit by a radioactive killer croc Yes. Man, he draws waists so small. These people are going to have hip dysplasia at a very young age. <laughs> Is this got, actually like, going to be the kill plot? asses? What was that? Sorry. Is this going to be. Um... The actual plot was that j- the joke that Josh made about the radioactive killer croc? Is that really going to be what the plot is? I don't know. I don't know. The cover has him with uh, the scaly skin and like a reptilian eye. So that's just yeah. what I was assuming. I mean, it has to be, right? It's Garth Ennis, so you know it's going to be really depressing, really bloody, and probably, unfortunately, a lot of poop jokes. I can't wait. It's a six issue mini. Uh... Got oh, you know what? Gallery going out there. This is like uh, a lot of the same color palette that Liam Sharp's been doing in the Green uh, Green Lantern stuff. This is interesting. I thought that was just because it was going to be uh, Green, uh, Grant Morrison, but this, I mean, there's a couple panels here that I'm already looking at that definitely seem more artistically. What's that guy's name? Um, Bill Sienkiewicz. He did. The, like he did one of the variant covers. When did they start doing this uh, version of the Catwoman where she's got like the goggles up on her head? Hush. Hush? Okay. I wasn't I, sure I if it was like so the anyway. Arkham Asylum games or not. No, Hush has no, like the famous Jim Lee with her with the goggles on her head. That's the first time I, I remember seeing it. 
that image has been around for a long time. That was from the Blue Breaker line of uh, Catwoman comics too. Like, that's one of my favorite uh, art styles of her. Um, I think Darwin Cook did the art on that too. Darwin Cook, man, God bless, rest in peace. Yeah, the poster's yeah. fucked. Is it really yeah. fucked? Yeah, it got caught into the wheel of my chat. Oh, uh, whoa. Ah, I can hear it tearing. Well, rip. That was a Christmas present as well. I'm so sorry. All right. Well, this this uh, this episode is cursed. Let's continue. Yeah. <laughs> what else can go wrong? Which one of that's, us is going to die on air? Uh, well, that's the only thing you can really do at this point. I mean, that's to, to just make it all the more uh, interesting. Uh, there really wasn't <laughs> anything else as far as news, right? Uh, I think no, that, that was all I had. All right. Well, this cursed episode is brought to you by Anchor.fm. Anchor.fm is the easiest way to get started on making your very first podcast. And hopefully it goes much better than this episode has gone for you with all the random interruptions, tearing apart of posters, tearing apart of Christmas gifts, and also the random technical issues that you're going to have. But hey, Anchor.fm is there for you to get started with transitions, putting in music into your show, and most importantly, getting sponsorships like this episode is being sponsored by Anchor.fm. Go to anchor.fm right now and you can get started making your very first podcast. And you can also download the app. Do it wherever you want to go. If you want to go do it at the Mickey D's and you just want to talk to, make do a podcast and talk and be like, hey, do, uh, Burger Johnson, why don't you talk to me about making burgers? And Burger Johnson is going to talk to you about rock and roll McDonald's and why it's really important to eat Wheaties in the morning because it's the breakfast of champions. You can do whatever do they the fuck have you Wheaties want. Wheaties at McDonald's? They should. Do they not have that where you're from? No, it's, that's too healthy in the Midwest. That's fair. Anyways, thank you very much for uh, watching this absolutely cursed special episode of Cult of Comics. You know what it is? It's because we didn't make a sacrifice this episode. That's what it was. You said at the beginning you're going to kill yourself, and then you didn't follow through. That's my own fault. I, I made a promise. I didn't commit to it. But you know what? This has been a really wonderful learning experience to just realize that I just I fucking just hate do both it. of you. And I'm just going to end my own life right hey, now. We all hate ourselves, so... I want to add, take this time to plug the National Suicide Hotline. It's 1-800-555-5555. Um, I think we should actually, you know, put the phone number out there. <laughs> just because. It's not a bad idea, just in case. Because we're all feeling it. Uh, mostly me. Asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. If you're feeling suicidal, please don't do it. Uh, call 1-800-273-8255. That is the Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Or 1-800-273-TALK. Uh, or if you ever need to remember it, you can just go listen to the Logic song. That's what I always do whenever I'm feeling suicidal. I go listen to the or Logic if, song. Or if you're feeling low, just re-watch this episode until you get to hear and hear the number again. Absolutely. Because I'll tell you right now, if this episode didn't make you not suicidal, then there's no saving you at this point. Because between the poster falling and me having random technical issues and Sean having random technical issues and Josh calling me racial slurs all episode, I mean... Whoa, you know, what? <laughs> It's okay, we'll cut those out in post. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can't help it, he's from Ohio. It's gonna, oh he's gonna God. sound like R2-D2 this episode. Bleep, bleep. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Anyways, this has been Cult of Comics Podcast where absolutely nothing goes right. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, you can find us on Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, Breaker, not Stitcher, I found out. Uh, Pocket Casts, all of the podcast locations that you can find. You can most likely find us on YouTube as well. Give us a like, give us a share, give us a follow. And of course, follow us on Patreon, where if you uh, give us a dollar or higher level, we will have you come on the show, enter into the Discord chat, uh, and, you know, compliment your uh, mismatched socks. Or in the case of Josh, shame you for it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. All hail. So are our Twitters not being given out this episode? Fuck the Twitters. No. <laughs> we can give the Twitters if you want. Yeah. You can find me on um, Twitter I'm... at Sean Walsh 747. I told you this episode is cursed. You can find me on Twitter at TCH Brown. And Josh, you can find uh, lurking in the back alley uh, behind the abortion clinic, just waiting with hunger. So the story I was going to tell you was um, so I had this friend, his name's Dave, Dirty Dave. Uh, down in Vancouver, Washington. Dirty Dave uh, has always looked to the same age, like no matter what, uh, for the majority of his life. Like it's just always been the consecutively like same age and it's just been like really weird. And one day he told me the story. He's like, oh, did I tell you about the story about how I maintain my youthful complexion? And I'm like, no, I have no idea. And he's like, oh, well, it's a fucked up story, uh, but it kind of makes sense because that's the story of my life. 
Uh, Dave, uh, Dave one day was uh, in a relationship with a uh, young woman and time well spent with his girlfriend, with this young woman, was spent fornicating. And one day he was going down on her when he noticed a large portion of blood. And he realized, hmm, this tastes a bit like iron, then realized that it was blood. Came back up and it was like, oh, you're on your period. We should probably stop. And so she was like, oh, I'm sorry. And then goes to the bathroom and she was not on her period. She had a miscarriage. He ate his miscarriage. 